What's up, everybody? Um, another season of Big Brother is on its way. Big Brother 21, uh, the cast was revealed yesterday. So uh, I was going to do this video and break down all the cast members and do all the stuff I do every single year. Um, I haven't watched any of the videos. I haven't watched Jeff's videos or Ika's videos. Uh, nothing like that. I just haven't had the time and I still don't have the time. So I'm just going to go off of their uh, written bios, which kind of doesn't really give you a complete sense of who these people are. Uh, for me personally, I need to see them talk in a video just like so their body language, their tone of voice, um, just things they do like facial features with their eyes, just ways to read people. It's easy easier uh, through a video rather than text because I don't even know what they sound like or if they have attitude when they talk or if they're very sweet or anything like that. I have no context uh, to their bios. So I'm going to do the best I can with what I have, which is the written bios I found off some site, whatever it is. Um, and we're going to go from there. So before I get into it all, I just want to say, you know, I've been really busy. I know I've been uh, MIA a little bit with these videos. I did some for BB Can 7, um, uh, and I'm going to be doing them again throughout the season of the Big Brother US. Uh, but I have been MIA. I've been very busy. I've been actually got into streaming. I'm starting to stream. I play a lot of video games, as, as I'm sure you guys know if you watch my seasons. I was on there as the pro gamer. So if you guys want to check it out. I'm going to put the link in the bio here in the video or uh, the information in the video. The link will be there. You can check it out. I, I stream every single day. So, you know, you guys can feel free to come in and just talk. If you have questions about the show or, you know, you watch an episode and you want to chat to me live, I'll be there live uh, and we can talk, you know, um, we can talk there. So that's just a little thing there. So I'll put the link there for you guys to see and uh, we can go from there. So I did, um, I just read uh, Annalise Talvera, I believe her name is. I read her bio and uh, I want to get into this a little bit. I have some mixed thoughts on her. Um, I have some notes here. So it says she's 22 and a soccer player. She likes Evil Dick, Danny Donato and Tyler Crispin are her favorite players. Now, to, before I get too far ahead, I want to say the fact that she's a, a soccer player, that's my background. So I know exactly the kind of shape that this girl uh, potentially could be in. Again, I'm only seeing her bio picture and this written information. But for her to be a soccer player, I'm telling you, I was in the best shape of my life when I was playing soccer. It's no joke because everything in soccer is about endurance. It's about being able to run for 45 minutes at a time. So it's a lot of endurance and cardio, core strength, uh, things like that. So I, I bet you this girl is going to be in amazing, amazing shape. So a lot of those endurance competitions, I'd put my money on her so far just from what I'm seeing. Uh, again, I don't know what she's like in person or how she talks or if she gives you know those vibes or or whatever but the fact that she's a soccer player she seems to be very very in shape um and again how she likes evil dick danny donato and tyler those are three amazing players and usually when people pick players like that you know they mean business you know you're always going to hear the generic you know dr will dan derek those are the generic answers and a lot of the times the people that pick those characters well i'm going to say more of a derek uh, he's the newer uh, generation of big brother now i don't want to take anything away from him. derek is a fantastic player definitely one of the best but usually when people say derek it's because they've only watched say one, two, or three seasons, and they're newer players. People that say players like Evil Dick, Danny Donato, you know they're there to play. You know they've watched a lot of seasons. They know the game. They get it, and I like that. So someone, someone like Annalise, if that's even how you pronounce her name, I hope that's how you pronounce her name, she gets it. And someone like that could be a big entertainer. She likes that kind of style, and I love that. Um... She says uh, she likes Danielle because she seems really sweet but has a sassy and bitchy side like her. Again, that's great. There's two sides to it. Um, you know, a lot of the times people see a player like that, they want to get them out simply because uh, just for peace of mind. People don't want to live with someone that's always going to give them attitude or be hard to live with. You guys got to remember, there these people are in there, I believe it's like 90 days in the States or something like that. It's 70 in, in Canada. It could be something like 90 in the States. I forget. You guys probably know better than me. But... Um, who wants to be around that environment for 90 days to be, you know, just stressed or what? I mean, obviously you're going to be stressed, but that extra level of stress on top of it, a lot of people don't want to put up with it. And that's why players like that usually get voted out first, simply for peace of mind. I know, 
you know, you watch the video, you're probably thinking, oh, whatever. No, you're in that house 24 hours, 24 hours, seven days a week. There's no escape. You know, when you're at home, you get to go to work. If you have a problem with someone at work, picture yourself at work and you can't stand somebody there. You can't wait to get away from them. Okay. You're only there for say five hours, eight hours, whatever hours you work a day. And then you get to go home and escape from them. Okay. And get away from that person or whatever you don't like. Uh, in the big brother house, you don't have that escape. So say you can't put up with someone, you're stuck with them until they get out of the house. And that's why a lot of the times these big personalities get voted out first because people are like, uh-uh, I don't want to deal with that for peace of mind. So that's the part of her I kind of want to see how it develops. Um, is she just saying that to build up her character or is she really going to go in and be sassy and bitchy and stuff like that? And who knows how that's even uh, perceived. I mean, I don't even know what she means by that exactly like is she always going to be like that or she kind of can be like that so that's a big uh a factor as well uh let's see uh, she likes Tyler because he played one of the best games in history. Absolutely. Tyler is a monster. He is by far, I would put him in the top three easily. He is such a fantastic player. Great social game. Everybody loved him. He controlled that season. Such a great, great player. Uh, Tyler is definitely one of my favorite uh, inside and outside of the house. He's a great guy. Uh, you know, fantastic player, fantastic person. Uh, the life, her life motto is be a badass with a good ass. Okay, I mean, hey, I can't complain with that, but um, hey, hey, it is what it is. So, okay, here's a couple of things I, I also found about her, which, again, could rub people the wrong way or could work in her favor. Is she seems, I don't want to say full of herself, but like a lot of things she said, like she can't go without her makeup. Uh, she's talking about how she has a nice ass or whatever, whatever it is. Um, so she's obviously, and I mean, she's a beautiful girl. She's stunning. So I get it. I definitely get it. But is there more to her than that? Is it more than just a pretty face? I don't know. Uh, again, I'm only reading the bio. I'm not even, I haven't seen her even open her mouth and speak yet. So, um, you know, but she kind of seems to have that kind of, you know, she knows she's pretty. I get it. So we'll see how that goes. It might rub people the wrong way, but again, it could work with the guys. And that's the thing too, is if she can get in with those guys and you know, they're just literally attracted to her and they don't want to get rid of her because she's beautiful. And I know it sounds shallow, but guys, it's the truth. It happens, man. People will do that simply because you're locked in this house. And I'm telling you, I know it sounds shallow, but it's truth. If someone's beautiful, it, sometimes the guys just can't do it. They can't bring themselves to get to get rid of them because, you know, boys will be boys, right? So, um, okay, if she could bring anything into the house, it would be her skimpy bikinis to attract the guys. I just went over this. Um, exactly. It's, it's exactly that. She's smart. And I kind of like how she uses, she's using her weapon, her body and her beauty is her weapon and she's going to use it to get the guys and it works and it's, it's shallow, it, you know, it might seem shallow on the surface, but it works. It's a game. You got to do what you got to do to win. And if her body is her main weapon, some people, it's their mind. Some people, it's their physical ability to, you know, win the comps and some people, it's their beauty. It's her weapon. So, Hey, you can't, you can't blame her for it. That's what she has. She's going to use it all the power to her. And I'm telling you right now, there's going to be at least one guy, probably two, three, four, eight guys that fall for it and it will happen. Now, the other side of it is how will the women react to it? Because some women don't like that when they see, you know, I don't want to say competition, but when they see someone that's so beautiful and all the guys want to be with her, uh, the women can then turn around and say, we have to get this girl out for jealousy factors. And it goes both ways. Guys are the same way too. I'm just saying loves joking, um, joking, scaring people and pranking people. Okay. I, I, when I read that, I'm just praying she's not another, um, uh, what's that? Uh, James. Oh, please. I hope she's not another James that I can't watch another season of another James. So I'm really hoping, uh, when she says that she's just not a James, please don't be a James, please, please don't be a James. Oh, please don't be a James. She says she's so emotional. She cries over literally anything. Okay, now that I'm getting deeper into this, I wrote these down. I didn't really, you know, dissect it when I was writing them down. I do that kind of as I go, just so it's, you know, fresh in my mind. Okay, so, so far we've seen that she likes Evil Dick, Tyler, Danielle. She uh, wants to use her body as a weapon, you know, put the bikinis on to attract the guys. She wants to, uh, she likes to joke, prank, and scare people like a James. And now she's saying she's emotional. She cries over literally anything. So... This girl at this point, what I'm seeing is literally casting gold. Um, she seems emotional. She seems like she has that um, um, entertaining side, dra dramatic side where she's going to start the fight. She's going to be crying. She seems athletic, so she's going to do good in comps. 
I mean, on paper, from what I'm seeing, this girl is casting gold. This is like the perfect, you know, mix of everything where she's just going to be either a hot mess or she's going to do well. Uh, so I'm really excited to see. But she cries over literally anything. We'll see how that goes. Because that house, and unless you've played it, you will never understand the pressure in there, the emotions in there. Um, you know, people can explain it to you. Like I can explain it right now and say, uh, you know, your emotions are at a times a hundred, which it literally is, but you don't know what that means. You don't know how that feels because you haven't been in that situation. Your emotions are literally at times a hundred. You're, you know, when you're angry, you're angry. When you're happy, you're happy. When you're sad, you're sad. Like there, it's, it's just times it by a hundred. Like your emotions are just, the scale just goes off the chart. That's, that's the difference of being in there. So she's always crying. Oh man, that's going to be interesting to see. Okay. So um, yeah, so basically my overall thoughts, I just pretty much went over it. Um, she could be an absolute wreck, an absolute mess, or she can do well. I wish I saw these videos so I could get more of a read on the person, uh, you know, just like body language and all that stuff again, but I didn't, so I can't. So I'm just going by what I have. And uh, I think she has either the tools to go really far or go home like pre -jury. I don't think there's kind of like a middle ground simply because it all depends on how she does with the guys and the girls. And, uh, I mean, if the girls just don't, they're not feeling her vibe with, you know, the skimpy bikinis because we've seen it before. It really happens. It's the truth. You know, when a girl's walking around trying to get the attention of the guys and, you know, two or three girls kind of get together and say, Hey, look at her over there trying to take all the guys, uh, you know, kind of weaponizing the guys now. Uh, -uh we got to stop that. So it all depends on that. So that's uh, Annalise Talavera, I believe her name is. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, and to be very honest with you, I'm rooting for her. Uh, the fact that she's a soccer player, that's my background. I love it. Um, I like that she's she likes Evil Dick, uh, Danny, and Tyler. Those are three amazing players to cheer for. I like that. So um, as of now, she is my girl that I am cheering for from day one. She's my preseason. I'm not going to say pick to win. I don't want to go that far yet, but I will be 100% uh, cheering for her. I just like what I saw. Um, just on the bio, the fact, I mean, a soccer player, we stick together. So um, that's her. That's Annalise. So anyway, um, let me know. Leave a comment below what you think, what your thoughts on Annalise are. If you've seen the videos, Tell me what I've missed. Tell me how she answered some of those questions that, you know, obviously I don't see here because I'm very, very interested because, I mean, it could literally change my mind uh, once I hear the other things that she says that I haven't seen it. So that's Annalise. Uh, let's move on to the next guest. Now we're going to get into Christy Murphy. It says she's twenty eight year she's a 28-year-old boutique owner, an overachiever, edgy and outgoing, likes doing anything in nature and hiking. Uh, the hardest part will be... Not being able to talk to whoever is running her store and she's a controlling person. Okay, I'll stop there and I'll kind of backtrack a little bit. Okay, so she's a boutique owner. So she has that drive uh, for sure. She, you know, business and, and stuff like that. Um, she's obviously used to being in charge, which again, she talks about uh, the hardest part is not being able to talk to whoever is running the store and that she's also a controlling person. Guys, this is big brother. That's not going to fly. Anybody that comes in and wants to be the boss, people that are used to being the boss at home and they want to come in and be the boss in the big brother house, these people are going to be like, who are you to come in here and talk to me like that? Who are you to come in here and tell me what I have to do? Uh, that's not how this works. So again, that's the type of people that rub people the wrong way and uh, can be seen uh, getting kicked out early simply because again like i've just talked about it's peace of mind and a lot of people don't want to put up with that stuff if they feel like they're going into a, an opportunity of a lifetime just to get you know bossed around or have you know a parent in there kind of looking over them no 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 that's not gonna fly you're gonna have to go so if she can keep that in check i think that's her best bet but to go in there and you can already tell just by reading her bio i could tell she's a very controlling person just not being able to talk to who's running the store um, you know, I don't know if that's like trust issues or whatever, who knows, but also being a very controlling person, not good for the big brother. Great in life, you know, to succeed in life, to be an owner of a store or whatever in the big brother house, completely different story. Now, again, before I go ahead, I want to just, I just want to nail this in now. When I break down these bios, 
these are not personal things. This is strictly off of bio about a game. I mean, I'm sure all these people are fantastic outside of the house and I have no, I, it's just, I want to make it very clear that I'm not here to chop anybody down. If you're looking for that, there's lots of other videos out there of people just bashing house guests. You're not going to get that with me. I'm just going to break down their game and their bios. Uh, I will not do personal attacks, not my style. So uh, getting back on track here. Um, okay. So she likes Jeff, Jordan, Paul, and Dan. Okay, uh, what does she like about Jeff and Jordan? Is it their personalities that she likes? Was it their gameplay that she likes? Um, I wanted to see more about that. Uh, she says she likes Paul and Dan. Paul is one of the best players. Like him or hate him. I know I don't even I don't understand why he gets all this hate. I mean, I guess it's maybe it was his attitude or his personality, whatever. But you know, then you see other players with similar personalities with him that get loved. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense how a player like Paul, probably one of the top, he's got he's one of the best players I've ever seen play. Um, other than the fact that you know, yeah, there was a few things, whatever. Um, but she likes Paul's game, and I like that. And then she also says she likes Dan. Um, so she does have knowledge of older seasons. How much was she told to watch certain seasons before she came in? I have no idea. But she knows Jeff and Jordan, so she knows old Big Brother. She knows Paul, so she knows new Big Brother. And she knows Dan, so at least... I think, I don't, and I'm not uh, certain on this, but I think in the States they tell you to watch certain seasons. And I think Dan's season might be one of them. I'm not sure. Um, okay, let's get into her strategy a little bit. Her strategy, she plans on using her sexuality as a major social advantage. We just talked about this with Annalise that, you know, uh, she's going to use her body as a weapon. And as shallow as it sounds, guys, if that's your strength, you use it. Here's the thing. There's now two girls. We've gone through two players, two girls, and they're both wanting to use their body as a weapon. Uh, now, so does that make each, them each other's competition? Maybe. Who knows? If both of them are going in there saying, hey, this is my job. I'm the one coming in here to make these guys uh, my my guys. You can't be the one coming in here and taking these guys away from me. There's only one of us that can control the guys. It can't be two of us. So they might even go head to head. Who knows? Um, this is all just hypothetical. So uh, going in, she's going in as an openly feminine lesbian and will use her charm uh, to manipulate the men while being the shoulder to cry on for the girls. Okay, so she's going in uh, openly lesbian, but going to charm the guys. I get, I guess what she's trying to say, I guess, with personality, kind of buddy up with them kind of thing. Okay, I could see that. And to also be there for the women uh, to cry on. I could see that. I mean, it could work for sure. Um, okay. Uh, and me, okay, she says, while she's doing that, she's not going to be seen as a physical or athletic threat to the boys. But then she says... Um, little do the guys know she's an overachiever and she's going to win a lot of the competitions. Uh, okay. She has a photogenic memory and a kill and she's killer puzzles. Okay. So this, this, okay. This girl has what I call like verbal diarrhea. She's going to say everything that comes into her mind. So at first she says, uh, she's going to charm all the, the guys with her sexuality, but then she says she's a feminine lesbian. Um, she's going to use her charm to charm the boys, but be a shoulder to crown for the girls. Then she says, Nobody's going to know she's a physical or athletic threat, but she's going to win all the competitions. So she's just contradicting herself on everything she's saying. It's like one of those things where she's sitting down for this interview and everything that comes to her mind, what she wants to do, she's going to just blurt it out. And she's going to be like, yeah, and I'm going to be a comp beast and I'm going to be a mental beast and I'm going to win every competition, but I'm going to throw every competition. She's just saying anything that comes to her mind. And the perfect example of that. Uh, Karen on season five, Karen Sigbeal on season five was HOH week one. And she literally come up to everybody and say, like, I want to get a guy out. I want to get a physical threat out. I want to get a mental threat out. I want to get a floater out. And she would say this openly in front of everyone. It's like, okay, well, you want to get a physical threat out? Okay. You want to get a guy out? Okay. You want to get a floater out? Okay. You want to get, oh, I want to get a newbie out? Okay. I want to get a vet out? Okay. She literally just covered everything. She literally said she wanted to get out everybody is basically what she said. Uh, and it just, when you say things like that, you, you, it's like when you're friends with everybody, you're friends with nobody kind of thing, you know? So... That's what it reminded me of. She was just kind of saying everything that was coming to her mind is just like the first thing that comes to her mind. Like, oh, I'm a competent, I'm a, I'm going to, I'm not going to be a physical threat, but I'm going to win everything. It makes no sense to me. So I think this girl has like verbal diarrhea where she's just going to say what's on her mind. Um, probably not a good thing in that house. She said she did pageants from eight to 12 and took home a title against 200 girls. I mean, that's a great achievement. That's not easy to do. Obviously the other 200 uh, girls in there are, you know, 
uh, in the same boat. And I know they're obviously pretty girls or whatever. So that's, uh, you know, that's, that's not hard to do. Don't take anything away from anybody. Uh, she hates dirty feet, so they better keep them off her bed, she says. Obviously, she hasn't watched Big Brother. Every single season, you will see how dirty the bottom of people's feet are. You literally watch all those live feed videos. You see the socks are black. Simply because nobody cleans the house. They don't have a cleaning service that comes in and, and mops the floor and vacuums the floor and sweeps the floor. No, 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 no. That's on the house guests to do. And trust me, when you're in there, these people don't want to be doing chores. They're in here the opportunity of a lifetime. Nobody vacuums. Nobody mops the floor. Nobody sweeps. That's the way it is. Uh, and I'll tell you firsthand, being in the house, both times I played... They had to give us a task to clean the house because it was so dirty. It was so dirty that they had to throw a task in the house where we had to mop the floors, wash the this, do the that, because the house is filthy. So if she doesn't like dirty feet, she's in for a treat because people will put their feet on the cat on the kitchen cabinets. They sit on the on the on the counter with their feet up on it. People will be all over the beds. Trust me, it's filthy in there. Uh, so she's she's in for a big treat. So anyway, that's Christy Murphy. I honestly, I don't know, man. I have so many mixed emotions with her simply because she has that verbal diarrhea. I haven't heard her talk. She just had so many different thoughts on her mind, so many different views, so many different play styles that they all just contradict each other. So I don't even know what the real Christy Murphy is going into the house, to be honest with you, because she says the right things and she says the wrong things and she contradicts herself and it makes no sense. So I can't get a read on her. But from what I'm seeing here, honestly, I can see a very early boot, especially with her. The only parts I'm like kind of grasping on, again, I haven't seen her talk. I don't know her body language, but the fact that she's a controlling person, not going to fly in there. So that alone, I'm going to say early boot, um, but who knows? All right. The next guy I want to talk to is Cliff Hogg III. He's a 53-year-old petroleum engineer. Uh, he's funny, caring, and stubborn. Loves water, sports, and politics. I'm going to stop there. That's a red flag. Right there. Red flag. And I think when he was cast for the show, they knew that. So I did hear some things about him being a, a Trump supporter or whatever. If that's what he supports, that's what he supports. Uh, whatever. And, um, okay, here's the thing. You know, in that house... Uh, you have nothing to talk about. And if someone like him is all into politics and loves talking about it, it's going to come up. And you know somebody in that house, especially a younger 20 whatever year old, is going to bring Trump up. It's going to happen. So this to me is almost a setup to get this guy uh, not into trouble, but to start some fireworks, okay? They know they cast this guy because he loves talking about politics. I heard he was a Trump supporter. There were some problems on Twitter about it or something. I don't know. I don't know the details. Don't want to start anything. Okay. So this guy here, uh, someone's going to bring up how they don't like Trump, for sure. And and I'm going to get into it a little bit later on about why that could be a problem because he does say a few other things. And I'll get into that part later. So I'm just going to stop it at politics. There's a big red flag there for me. The hardest part will be uh, not talking to his family or knowing what's going on in the outside world. Um, you know, I can really... Um, I can, I can see this guy's point. I can see, I can really feel for the guy on that because I was, you know, I have a family, I have a kids and, and a wife and going into the house, um, it's really hard not being able to talk to them. And again, if you haven't played the game, you will not understand because even if say you do go on a vacation, you can always text, call, FaceTime, whatever, your family back home. But when you're gone for three months and, you know, especially when you have young kids and you can't talk to them, it, trust me, it is, it is. It's just a different feeling that you'll never feel unless you experience something like this. Um, it's tough, for sure. I can definitely relate with that. Uh, says he likes the logical strategic players or play from people like Derek, Vanessa, or Dan, but didn't like how Vanessa whined when she felt the chips were stacked against her. Buddy, you haven't been in there. Just wait, man. Once you get in there, you're going to feel that. You're going to feel that moment when you realize, oh, man, everything's crumbling down on top of me. Um you, you can't, you don't know the feeling, dude. You're going to find out really soon, man, because I don't see you staying too, too long. Uh, actually, that's, I'm going to say something too. I either think he's going to go very early or I think he's going to get carried deep into the game and kind of get disposed when he's um, not needed anymore. But it's one or the other with this guy. But anyway, he doesn't know what it's like about the whining when you feel the chips are stacked against you. If there's anybody that can complain, trust me, it's me. Um, if you've seen season three, you know my story about season three. Uh, anyway, 
not to get into it. Okay. Um, his strategy is to seem like a loyal soldier while creating panic and chaos and making them point fingers at each other. Okay. And here's another thing. It's very easy to say that. It's very easy to say, hey, I'm the loyal guy. Everyone's going to trust me when I go in. And I'm just going to point the fingers and I'm going to just make everything happen. I'm going to make you go after you. Buddy, people talk in there. Everybody talks. When it's time to get that information from someone else to say, well, where are you hearing this from? And they say, oh, it's Cliff or whatever this guy's name is. And people start comparing notes. Buddy, you're found out. You're caught. You're done. So it's very easy to say, oh, you know, I'm going to do this and that when I go in there. And I'm just going to be the loyal guy. Everybody's going to trust me. They're gonna, as soon as you walk in, man, there could be three people that are like, I don't like this guy. Who is this guy? Who does this guy think he is? And your whole strategy is cooked before you even open your mouth and say a word. And I can actually relate to that on season five. When I came back into season five, um, I had Dre and William in the house with me. And I didn't even say a word to anybody. I walked in that door and as soon as they saw me, they said, that guy has to go. Bruno has to go. And I was their main target from the second I walked in the house, simply because they seen my game, they seen what I can do, they knew my game. And, uh, but I mean, obviously it's a little different that this guy hasn't played before, but that's how it is. If you walk in that door and someone can just be like, who is this guy? Especially when you have all these younger people and stuff like that, you can't go in thinking you're gonna do this and that. You kind of have to, you know, almost fall where you can, find that little crack where you can fit in and get in that crack and then you can start trying to do your thing. But if you think you're gonna go in there and just everyone's gonna trust you, Dude, that might not be your role this season. That might not be your role. And if you think you're going to be the trusted guy, I don't know. Okay, his motto is... Okay, now this is where I'm going to get back into politics a little bit with this guy because he says his motto is never let people tell you what you can or can't do and never be afraid to stand up for what you believe in. There's two parts to this I want to talk about. Um, never let people tell you what you can and can't do. I just finished talking about... Uh, I forget her name already, but the business owner... And I think her name was Christy or something and how she is very, um, she's a control freak and very bossy and she likes to control everybody. And here's this guy saying, never let anybody tell you what to do. So we have someone who's a control freak that wants to tell everyone what they can do. And then we have a guy sitting here saying, never let anybody tell you what you can do. That can be a problem. That can be a problem. And I know when, when they're going through and making these casts, they know how to kind of pit people against each other. And this could be it uh, simply because supposedly he's a Trump supporter. So, you know, all that stuff there. And, um, and he's saying, don't let people tell you what to do. She is, uh, an open lesbian and, uh, is a, is a bossy person. So I don't think those two people are going to collide. I'm just saying, I don't know. I'm just going by what I see. Um, I could be very wrong. The other thing is stand up for what you believe in. Okay. So now I'm going to get back into the politics. Uh, supposedly he's a, the, the Trump supporter. He likes to talk about politics and he's going to stand up for it. So again, that's where I'm going to bring it all back into where I started. If someone, one of the, you know, a lot of the younger uh, audience, a lot of the younger people do not like Trump. You know, he's a very old school mentality. He's not up with the times, stuff like that. So when you have someone young in there, that's going to bash Trump or say something about Trump and you have him saying, no, 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 no. This is the way it is. This is what's up. This is what's up. That causes tension. That causes problems. Politics is never a good thing to get into, especially in the big brother house. Anywhere you go, the rules are don't talk about politics. That's what people say. Do not talk about religion. Do not talk about politics because there's always just different views and, and there's, it's just, there's a separation. You know, as, as sad as it is, that's what it is. I'm not into politics, so I really don't care about that stuff. I, I don't really care, but people do. And I'm just going by, I'm just talking about overall. Uh, people do, and it's just, it's, it's crazy to me. So I think this guy, you know what, he's in for a treat, man. I think he's gonna go in. He already is the old guy. So the chips are stacked against him. He's the easy, easy, easy out day one, guys. The, the old person is the easy out day one. It's just the nature of the beast. It's the way it is. But if they can, you know, kind of keep themselves safe for two, three weeks, they then go from being the weakest link to becoming a number. And I'm going to talk, I'm going to say this, and I hope people are paying attention when I say this, okay? If you ever play the house, use the old person as a number. I will promise you this. I promise this is the best advice you'll ever hear. They want to be included, man. And I know I'm, it sounds crazy when I say the old person wants to be included, but trust me, they know going in the house that they are the target week one. They know they're going to try to grasp and get onto anybody week one. Someone they can trust. That's what they want. That's what they're, they're dying to get is that someone to trust. Be that someone that they can trust. Be that person. Be that shoulder. Be that 
be that person for them that they can trust and then you use them moving forward but to get them out week one is just crazy because they they really want that somebody to work with and as as you see if they don't win hoh week one they're usually gone so anybody that, that plans on playing use the old person I, I hate even saying it like that but use the old person the cast as your weapon bring them in that's what they want that's what they need because they know if they don't make friends week one they're going home anyway about this guy, eh, I don't know, man. I just kind of mixed feelings. I don't know. Again, it's just a written bio. Didn't hear him talk. No idea. But I don't think he's going to do that well. Um, I think in his mind, he thinks he's going to do something going in there, pointing fingers and, and making fights and all this stuff. In reality, I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's going to either be a piece of furniture, useless, or he's going to get in some arguments, cause some fireworks. Other than that, this guy is not going to be any, um, you're not going to remember this guy uh, five months from now. Anyway, okay, so that's uh, Cliff or whatever his name is. Now we're on to David Alexander. He's a 29-year-old photographer. He's new to the show, and he plans on watching a few seasons. Okay, he plans on using his charm and memory to win. He's into CrossFit and photography. His strategy is to watch two seasons and get a feel of how the winners did it. His gift of gab and charm is his other weapon. Says he can cry on demand. Literally, that's my notes on this guy. Okay, here's the thing, man. Um, I don't know. He didn't give me much on this bio, okay? But I'll give him... I'll, I'll kind of open it up a little bit for the guy. So, he's new to the show, which a lot of people think is a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. Honestly, I do not think it's a bad thing if you're new to the show. I think it's good. It brings a different angle to it if you're green to it. A lot of people that are fans of the show kind of feel like they have to play a certain character. Or they feel like this is how you play the game. It's like robotic which isn't good because when someone becomes robotic, you can see their moves and you can say, okay, they're trying to do this. When someone's new to the show and very green to the show, you don't know what they're going to do next. And those are the harder players to play against. I'll tell you right now, it's when you don't know their next step. That's the hard player to play against. And someone like David that doesn't know his own next step because he doesn't know what he's doing can become dangerous. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to be this amazing player. I'm not saying that whatsoever, but he can be a very unpredictable player. Uh, the other thing I want to say is if he doesn't know the show, you know, everybody knows the fine. Like if you and the, the advantages of watching the show is you can see the strategies that have worked. OK, things that have worked or you can kind of feel or see when a backdoor is coming or things like that. Where him, I think he'll be very lost. I think he can get blindsided easy, little things like that. Uh, if, if he were to make it to the final three, he'd be a complete lost cause because it's all about um, the days and stuff like that. And that's where I feel the people that know the show and that watch the show, they know that every year the la the final three competition is always memory based. Um Questions about the season and blah, blah, blah. And it's always about stuff like that. So that's where players that are new, that's where they lose. That's where they, they get screwed over is when they, if they do get to the end and it's like, well, I didn't study. I didn't know we had to do something like this. That's the disadvantage. Um, okay. But he says, you know, he has charm and, uh, you know, he's the gift of, ga uh, gift of gab, which means he has like the talent to talk to people and kind of, you know, get, get people comfortable with him and stuff, which is huge. It's a social game. So I honestly, like, even though I didn't get a lot from this guy, if I read between the lines and I kind of fill in his story for him, he has a lot going for him. I, you know, the, listen, the game, I know people like old school, big brother, and where it was about, you know, there was like the strategic parts and there was those big characters you'll always remember, like an evil dick or a Dan or stuff like that, a Will, a Boogie, you name them, Janelle, you name Rachel Riley. There's so many characters that you'll never forget. I don't see that with like a player like this It's it's that, that comes in. You never know. I mean, he might do something crazy. Um, but I don't know. I don't know about this guy. So I feel like he, he, um, he has the right tools to do what he says he's going to do, but can he put it into play is a different thing. I really don't have too much to say about this guy. Um, you know, who knows? I mean, again, I haven't seen him talk. He, and that's the thing too, with when you're reading it, he says he has this charm and stuff. I haven't physically seen his charm. So maybe he's really good at talking and, and, and it works, you know? And the other thing too, that the factors in is like, when you go in, if you buddy up with someone that might know the show, they can fill you in on all those gaps you don't know. There's so many variables here. I'm just going off by these bios. And what he said really didn't give me much. So anyway, that's David Alexander. Um, I'll have to see him play before I can kind of really understand this guy but he hasn't watched the show at all so he has no familiarity with like vetoes and stuff like that he's going to kind of go off that and another thing i want to say is if he's going by uh the winners 
Well, it depends on what winner you watch. Are you watching, uh, you know, Dr. Will as a winner? Are you watching Dan as a winner? Are you watching Steve Moses as a winner? Are you watching, um, I don't know, uh, I don't know who else, whoever there is. Uh, who won last year? Casey. Are you watching Casey as a winner? There's so many different strategies to win. There's no set strategy. So what game are you going to mimic? Are you going to mimic like Josh's game? Steve Moses' game? Evil Dick's game? Uh, whoever. I don't know. There's so many different winners. So whose game are you going to try to mold it off of? They got there in completely different ways. So anyway, that's David Alexander. I don't have too, too much about the guy, but uh, you know, time will tell. Okay, next I have Holly Allen. She's a 31-year-old wine safari guide. Uh, the hardest part of being in the house is that she's always on her phone and she's a millennial, she says, and that's just the way it is. Um, she hasn't watched the show to have a favorite house guest. And what is her strategy? And her answer is, oh, I have lots of strategies from A to Z. That's literally my notes on this girl. I'm going to say complete dud. Um, nothing personal. That's her answers. If that's her answers in these interviews to get, you know, the world, Canada, the States to get to know her, that's her answers. That's all my notes for her. I just went through her notes in 15 seconds. That's insane. Um, I don't know. She hasn't watched the show. Her strategy is that she has lots of strategies. So in other words, she has no idea what she's doing. Um, the hardest part is not being on her phone, whatever. And uh, she hasn't watched the show. So I'm going to go back to saying I'm going to try to fill in a lot of gaps here because I have nothing to work with. Again, I'm going to go over the fact that because she hasn't watched the show isn't necessarily a bad thing. A lot of times players go in the house and they do nothing and then they end up in final three or two or they get brought to the end or whatever. And people are doing things for them. I honestly, I can't even say anything about her because I don't have anything to even say about her. Uh, haven't seen a video on her. That's the answers I have. Literally, Holly Allen, that's my review on her is I have no idea uh, what to even say about her. She's a 31-year-old safari guide with strategies from A to Z. Hasn't watched a show before. So anyway, uh, sucks, but that's what it is about her. Um, I don't see her doing anything like that's and that's actually here. I'll fill in some more things here. It's like I don't see these kind of players being memorable. You, you won't get these kind of players anymore. Like I mentioned in the last guy I talked to, I talked about um, people like this. I don't know why they get cast. I really don't know why they get cast. To me, it's like they're getting cast because they want to be Instagram famous or whatever, Twitter famous, whatever you want to call it. There's no reason for this person to be in the show. I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe they saw something in her that we don't. Again, I haven't seen her video, so I have no idea. Maybe she's quirky or funny or whatever. But from those answers, I don't see anything. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I got to just watch her play to see. But that's, that's my Holly Allen. Uh, I literally have nothing on her. All right. Now we're on to Isabella Wang. 22-year-old public health analyst. Spontaneous, reckless, and generous. Uh, the hardest part is nothing. She says she low-key feels like she was born for this. I kind of like that answer because I felt the same way. I, I always felt the same way before I tried out. I felt like when I was 15, I'll never forget. I was 15 years old and I was watching Dr. Will on season two. And I'm watching him play and I said, man, you know, I could do that. That This is this show is built for me. I could do that. This This is what I need to do. And from that moment on, when I watched season two, I was like, I'm going to be on that show one day. And that was literally something I said. I said, I'm going to be on that show one day. And uh, I thought you had to be like 21 or whatever to audition. So when I hit 21, I started looking it up for the States. And uh, and then I realized you had to be an American uh, citizen or whatever it is. And then so I was just like, oh, okay, well, whatever. I guess I'll never play until it came to Canada. And then the rest is history. But so I, I like I like her answer about that because I felt the same way. I was born. That's why I felt like I'm made to play this game. The, the, my strengths are perfect for this game. Um, her favorite favorite play, and I like this answer too. She seems very confident. Now I can't figure out if it's cockiness or confidence again because it's a written bio. Um, her favorite player is herself when she won season 21. Is what her answer was. I mean, it is a good answer. I'll give her that. Her strategy is bribery. Uh, I don't know how I'm reading that. If it's like uh, she's trying to take some information and then maybe using that information kind of bribe them like, hey, well, I know you want to get this person out kind of thing. If that's what she means, that's a good strategy. I give her that. Uh, she said she climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, which is no joke. That's a feat for sure. So, I mean, she has, you know, uh, endurance or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's no joke at all. Uh, she, okay, she doesn't like to smoke weed 
or people that do because she finds them lazy. Okay, I mean, that's kind of stereotypical, I guess, a bit. But, um, you know, <laughs> I guess Canadians aren't going to like her very much because it is legal here in Canada now and there's a lot of people that smoke. So who knows? Okay, so uh, my thoughts about her. Again, I haven't seen her video. This is all on written bio, but I like her. I feel like she has at least the confidence uh, to do well. I feel like uh, her mindset is right. And I think she's gonna. I think she's there to play. I actually think she's gonna make some moves. I think she's gonna cause some drama, and I think she's gonna move some pieces. I think she's gonna be a big factor in the season as long as she can get along with people. That's kind of the big um, question mark for me. Is she gonna be able to get along with people, or are people not gonna be able to put up with her? Uh, I don't know if it's arrogance. I don't know if it's cockiness or confidence. But some people just can't handle that stuff. Some people just don't like that stuff. So it's there's a big variable there. But I think if she can kind of get along with people, she has the right mindset. She's there to play. I'll give her that. From what I read, she is there to play the game. And I like that a lot. And that's someone I will be trained for. Um, at least from what I'm reading. I'm going to wait till I see the episodes to actually kind of see these people interact. But she is definitely someone I'm looking out for and watching to see how she plays. So that's Isabella uh, Wang, 22 years old. Uh, I think she's there to play for sure. All right, now we are on to Jack Matthews. He's a 28-year-old fitness trainer. He uh, says his three things, three characteristics to uh, describe himself as honest, integrity, and character. Um, his, his favorite activities are CrossFit. His strategy is to be um, honest, integrity, and good character. Uh, it says he can walk on his hands for quite some time and he can snatch 275 pounds and it's some kind of uh, Olympic weight talk. Okay, that's literally his bio. Uh, even this, this, this site I was reading said it's the shortest bio they've done. Okay, so I got a few things about this guy. <clears throat> okay, very short bio, man, a few words, I guess. Um, but here's the thing, okay, I don't, again, I don't think he's going to be some like great player, but he is... He's a very attractive guy. The girls are going to love him. They're going to kind of, you know, gravitate towards him. And the men are going to want to work with him because he's a beast. We've gone through this a couple times. I Actually, when I was breaking down the BB Can 7 cast, I said the exact same thing about Adam Pike. I said, I don't think he's going to be this great player per se. Maybe he is, maybe he won't. But he's gonna have a lot of power because the girls are gonna love him. The guys are gonna to want to work with him. And if you know he's a very athletic guy, he can win a lot of competitions. That's how I describe the guy. And I'm gonna say I'm not gonna say they're the same player, but Jack Matthews, this guy here, he's a good-looking guy. I think the girls are gonna love him. The guys are gonna to want to work with him, and I think he's gonna be able to win a lot of competitions um, and 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 stuff like that. So he's gonna to be to me what the Adam Pike was of season seven of uh, Big Brother Canada. Now, I'm not going to say this guy's going to go in and win every competition. Maybe he does. I don't know. But I'm saying he's going to have that kind of power. And it's the game is so different these days where it's not about strategic players anymore. It's a popularity contest. If you're in that house and everyone wants to be your friend, you have the power. You have the power. You don't have to be a, a great player or a physical beast or whatever. As long as people want you as their friend, you have the power. So I think he has... A leg up on people because he seems again I haven't watched him in a video this is all by bio but he seems like a cool guy where people are going to gravitate towards him or want to work with him just for being him he doesn't have to say or do anything just by him being him people are going to want to work with him um, and again if he's talking about honesty integrity character he obviously seems to have good uh, moral values which you know people will like when they see it um, and they'll want to work with that too they'll trust him maybe he seems very trusting and things like that obviously the girls I think are going to be into the guy so maybe a showman, uh, there's an opportunity for that too. So I think there's a lot of variables for this guy to work for him. I think he has a lot of things going his way just by being who he is, which, hey, that's life. That's the way it is. Good for him. So uh, can he win? Maybe. I think he's going to go very far simply because he has all these variables. He almost has like a leg up going into the house. So I think this guy's going to do very well. He's someone to watch out for. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, not much more to say about the guy. I think he's going to do a lot of... Um, I think he's going to be a character, a main character in the plot, though, uh, throughout the season. I think you're going to see a lot of screen time uh, with this guy. Okay, so next I want to talk about Jackson Mitchie, I believe is how it's pronounced. He's, he's a 24-year-old server. He's driven, assertive, and confident. Um, he, his favorite activities are fitness and social events. Um, his favorite players are Paul and Brett. Paul because he told it how it was. And, res and he respects that. 
and Brett because he's a guy's guy to a T and he feels like he would get along with Brett um, very well. Um, his strategy is to be physical, which he's very good at, but not too physical. He says he has to pick the comps, kind of, you know, pick and choose which ones he wins, kind of win as you have to, uh, kind of, kind of deal, which is what I did too. So I, I, I understand that part. Uh, it says he's good at connecting with people and reading them and selling them on whatever they're, they're trying to buy. Uh, you know, again, it's the same thing. I feel like I'm the same way. I'm, I'm good at talking to people and I can kind of sell you what you don't even know you need to buy. Um, I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just, that's just the way it is. So, okay, I can kind of relate with this guy on certain levels. I feel like he's the guy's guy, though. Like, I feel like he's like a bro and stuff like that. Um, and that's the kind of vibe I got, which, again, could be good and it could be bad because some people, they don't like the bros kind of people in the house. They usually become targets, especially if they bro up with another guy. It's two guys seen together. It's a big target. So a lot of times the bros don't work that well simply because it's like, hey, those are two strong guys working together. We have to break that up. And it's just, are you the one that's the target or are you the one that kind of can uh, be, you know, not targeted that week and kind of fall under the rug kind of thing. Um, anyway, I see him. Um, I see, I don't know. From what I read, I see like the guy has the right tools. He's saying the right things. Now, can he put it into place? Is he going to be obnoxious? Is he annoying? Is he kind of over the top? Uh, does he have like a temper? We don't know those kind of things. He also says he can shotgun a beer in two and two and a half seconds. So he's definitely like a partier kind of guy, which whatever. I mean, a lot of the people that go on these shows are, um, you know, that's just things you don't see behind the scenes stuff. But anyway, it's, it's, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So I see him being like a bros bro. And if you saw what happened on season seven of BB can, um, there was uh, a guys alliance and all guys alliance are called the pretty boys or whatever. And they ran the show. They ran that show. The other side of the house had no no chance. So if, you know, I see a couple of really fit guys in here, if they can kind of do the same thing, get together and, and run deep to the end, uh, it could be very, very dangerous for their house guests. Um, again, it's, you know, he's into fitness. There's a few other people that are into fitness. Will they bond over it or will they see each other as competition? You know how it is in the gym. People, they square up all the time. They see a, a big guy and they, you know, start flexing and stuff. You know how it is. Is that going to happen in the house or are these guys going to be like, hey, buddy, let's, you know, get together. Let's work together. So there's so many variables. But I mean, from what I see, this guy will kind of be like a whatever. I think he'll be like a middle of the pack kind of guy. I don't see anything too crazy coming from him. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, he's a good looking guy. So I'm sure, uh, you know, some of the girls will, will be attracted to him. Maybe there's a showmance too. Who knows? Um, but I didn't see him saying anything about showmances or anything like that. So who knows? But, um, yeah, I mean, this guy, I mean, on paper, he has what it takes to kind of be that manipulator, uh, maybe like a diary room kind of guy. So uh, only time will tell. But anyway, I'm kind of like, uh, whatever on this guy, I got to see him play before I can kind of see, but, um, yeah, I think there's potential. I think there's definitely potential with this guy. Uh, if he does what he says he does. Okay. Next I have... Jessica Milagros. I hope I'm saying it right. She's a 30-ish model. Hardest part uh, is going to be leaving her family and friends. Her favorite player is Dan from season set from season 10. Um, she says he's the perfect mix from smart and funny and also conniving. I'm going to stop here for a second. If you guys notice the trend, okay, all these people's favorite player is probably three different players, and they're, other than Derek, it's all older players. The new Big Brother format is just, there's no memorable players anymore. The way the game has evolved and everything and what the fans want, it, it just leaves for these like non-memorable players. I legitimately forget about a lot of the players um, all the time because they just, they come in, they do their thing, they go home, nothing happens. It's all a big, you know, party in the house where before it used to be about the game and there was the moves and all that stuff. So if you notice, a lot of these people say, Dan, Derek, uh, Paul is a new one, uh, but other than that, uh, it's it's literally the old people appreciate the old Big Brother better, uh, and a lot of the, I find the newer players are just very not memorable anymore. Um, her strategy is to be herself. She says if you show interest in people's lives, they will confide in you, which is very very right. I'll tell you right now, uh, that was part of my strategy as well. Just. Get to know people on a personal level and you got to get to know each person individually. You can't talk to everybody the same. Uh, you got to talk to a, a certain person a certain way to connect to them on their level. You got to talk to this person a different way to connect to them on their level. Um, so at least she gets that. I think she gets the social aspect of it. Do I think she's going to be this big player? Probably not. I think she's going to be uh, someone that kind of coasts along a floater, just um, 
but has a good social game where she sits on the couch with someone and just talks to them. Uh, not entertaining. Uh, those conversations just aren't entertaining. I don't know if she's going to be entertaining, but those conversations themselves aren't entertaining. Uh, so they don't really make the show. But it's those are the conversations that make you, that set you up in the house um, just because if people confide in you and if people trust you, they're not going to want to get rid of you and it's going to be hard for them to vote you out, if, especially if you're their rock. And if, if that's her strategy is to kind of try to be people's rocks, uh, you know, when they're breaking down and stuff, uh, she's, she's going to do okay. I don't think she's going to be a great player, but it can help her survive. I mean, until the point where they're just like, yeah, she's got to go. Uh, it's just her turn kind of thing. I could be very wrong. I just don't see her doing much uh, in the in the grand scheme of things. So that's uh, that's all I really have about Jessica Milagros. Uh, time will tell, but I just don't see her doing anything. I don't see her being a memorable character down the road. Who knows? All right, so the next one on the list is Catherine Dunn. She's a 29-year-old digi digital marketing whatever, uh, and she works, lives, breathes marketing, and is all about her social media. She's never watched a season before, has no favorite past house guests because she doesn't even know who any of them are. <laughs> and this is the exact character and cast that I have zero interest in, do not care about them, not because they haven't watched the show, because they're only here to better their Instagram. They want to be Instagram famous, they want to be social media famous, and I can't stand that i have no interest in that i have no interest in her i have no interest in that kind of person that comes on these shows now there's so many people that would love to be on it and all they care about is the clout that they get after the show and they have all those followers and they can start marketing themselves and that's the only reason why they're there i'm not about that i don't like it and I'm not cheering for her straight up. So uh, nothing against her personally, but I think her reasons for being on this show are in the totally the wrong spot. And uh, you know what? I might have, there's nothing else to say about her simply because she's there for the wrong reasons. She's there to better her social media, which I get it, but I'm not here for it. So anyway, uh, next. Okay, my next uh, person I'm going to be talking about here is Kemi Feknuli. I believe that's how you say it. She's a 25-year-old marketing strategist. She's uh, a by any means necessary woman and says she's a bitch. Okay, so that means like uh, she'll do what it takes. Whatever it takes, she's going to do it. I like that attitude. I like that kind of drive uh, in anybody. That's awesome. Hardest part uh, is not being on her phone. She says when she's walking down the street, she pretends to scroll through so she doesn't have to talk to people. That could be a problem. Uh, but if you notice, a lot of these people, that's their answer. What are they going to miss the most is their phone. What are they going to miss the most is their phone. It's kind of sad, really, when you think about it. But it is what it is. Um, uh, whatever it is. The other thing I wanted to say was uh, she does that to avoid communication. This house that she's about to go into or that she's probably in right now is all about communication. The whole show is about communication. So if she's spending all her free time trying to avoid communication, uh, you know, that's some red flags right there because in this house, you're not going to be able to get away from them. They're not going to have anything like a phone to kind of distract you uh, in order for people not to talk to you. Uh, that's all you have to do in there really is to talk to each other. So the fact that she uh, is always trying to avoid um, communication or whatever, I know I'm taking it probably a little bit out of context for sure. Uh, but, you know, it just goes to show maybe she doesn't like talking to new people or opening up or whatever. Uh, so that could be a little bit of a problem. She loves Rachel Riley and Jessica Graff. She loves uh, that Rachel was there for the cheddar and her man and nothing else, which is awesome. I mean, I agree. I think Rachel's one of the greatest characters to ever play uh, simply enter for entertainment purposes. And you know what? I kind of see similarities just, just off the, the bio of reading through it. I can see that, that there's going to be a lot of fireworks. There's going to be a lot of drama. Uh, she seems like she's like a take no prisoner kind of kind of girl where it's like she's going to just go in uh, just like a bomb. Just go off and just uh, and, and cause uh, havoc. Uh, that's 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 the views and, and, the, and the way I'm seeing it. I mean, I could be way off, but that's the way I see it. Her strategy is to make as many connections, but fewer alliances. So she has all the info and then she can kind of use it as she wants. Uh, which is a great idea. And again, I use that on, on my seasons as well, is where you're friends with people, they tell you things. So when they're telling you things and you're getting things, you're getting information from kind of all different sides, you can actually piece the game together and, and fill in the blanks yourself. And it really makes seeing the game and who's working with who and how things 
are going to play out a lot easier and it helps you set up your next moves as in who you should target because now you know everybody else's targets and who you can target to better your game and still keep other people's targets in the game without causing a lot of uh, blood and uh, damage to your own game. So if you are friends with everybody and you can connect all the pieces, it's really, really, really good for your game. I like your answer. Um, it is the right answer. Um, okay, your strategy is to make as many connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, Oh, but if she's not well liked, uh, she says she's gonna bust ass in HOH and veto comps. I like, you know, I like her. I I, I don't think she's gonna be like this great strategic player or she's gonna win the show. But I think she's gonna get a ton of camera time. I think she's gonna be super entertaining. Her DRs I can see right now are gonna be amazing. I, I can just see it now. She's gonna have good DRs, a lot of screen time, uh, for sure in the mix of of drama and stuff. For sure, uh, I can see that already. Um, <clears throat> you know what? I I'm gonna I, I'm actually kind of cheering for her in a way, simply because I want to see what happens. I think she's gonna be kind of like not the star of the show, but the entertainer of the show. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna give her some credit where it's due for sure. I mean, she needs it. So I think uh, I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, watching her play this year. All right. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is Nick. I hope I'm saying it right. Macaroni, 26 year old therapist. Uh, he's only watched since BB-17, but says it was fate. So I guess there was a tornado or something and he ended up at his aunt's house and uh, she had it on TV right at the premiere and he was hooked ever since. Cool story. I like it. Uh, he wants to win. So his strategy is he wants to win the first HOH. Uh, he goes on to explain a bit. He says, uh, whoever wins it usually does well. Um, and explains how like in BB, you know what? It's funny that I never really realized this, to be honest with you. I never realized this, uh, cause usually the, the whole thing is, you know, you don't win the first HOH, which, you know, if you do think about it, it, there is no blood on your hands. You know, the first week you can kind of sit back, get all the information. Everyone's going to want to make deals with you, uh, simply because you are the HOH. I guess I kind of see both sides, but He's saying basically the people that win the first one do well, but usually you hear the opposite. But it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I know he, here he sets up a few examples, but I'm sure there's more examples, you know, that kind of confirm the other theory uh, that you don't win it. But who knows? Anyway, he says uh, they usually do well because in season 17, James won it and uh, he won it first and he went really far and he won America's Favorite and BB-18 uh who was it bb18 won the show whoever did it on bb18 won the show uh bb19 was the paul show uh and he knows for a fact that josh took the safety for the first week and won it all i don't know what that means but okay and tyler won it on season 20 he won the first situation on season 20 and he got all the way to the end and he also won uh, America's favorite player. So he does have a few good points. I guess ever since season 17, uh, if you win the first HOH, I guess you're doing pretty good. Um, which is kind of, you know, weird to me. But that's all the notes I have on this guy. It's kind of hard, really hard to read him. I can see he's into sports. He's into girls a lot. He talked about like being the first ticket dump or something, uh, whatever. I don't know. I, I, again, I haven't seen his video, so I don't know if he's kind of like the funny guy. He seems very athletic. He's, he's supposedly uh, bowled five 300s in bowling, which is no joke. Uh, he plays a lot of baseballs and the sports, uh, things like that. So I, I could see this guy being athletic, um, which is good. I know he talks about girls a lot, which could be good. It could be bad. It could put him in a showman's. It could kind of, you know, skew his game and kind of cloud his thoughts because everybody that knows when you're in a showman's, sometimes they work really, really well. You find that person, you ride or die and you go with it and it works well. Other times you see people kind of falling on the sword for this girl or the guy, whatever, and they break up, you know, three months down the road. And here they are throwing their life on the line for this person that they're not even dating anymore a few months later. Um, so, you know, I never had to deal with that problem because I, I went in the, the house and I'm married. So I didn't have to worry about, you know, showmances and girls and this and that. But, you know, to these people, they go in and, and your emotions are so high when you're in there. Everything is amped up to a thousand. So when you see someone that you maybe even, and I'm not even going to say they're moderately attracted to each other, but it's just amplified so much because you're stuck in this house with these people. There's only these, uh, you know, six or seven other girls that you're going to be seeing for three months. And it's just, that's just the way life works, right? So um, not to say that they wouldn't care about each other, but everything's amplified and you have so much time to kind of sit there and just talk to each other all day that the emotions become real, real fast. 
Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm just throwing out, I mean, who knows? Maybe he doesn't get in a showman. So I'm just saying he talks about girls a lot. Uh, there's some, some very beautiful women in there. So who knows what can happen? But yeah, anyway, he seems like, uh, he seems like he knows what he's talking about a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how he plays. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to get a read off of that little bio, to be honest with you. I don't know where he sits. I, I after the first episode, I'll kind of, you know, when I see them in action, I see them kind of talking to each other, body language, if they're quirky or whatever they have, the little things. That's when I can kind of piece things uh, together a little bit more. But off of just written text, it's really hard. But anyway, I think he's going to do okay. I, um, maybe he's going to get himself in a little bit of trouble. Who knows? But that's Nick. I hope I'm saying it right. Macaroni. Okay, next I'm going to talk about Nicole Anthony. <clears throat> First of all, they always say you can't trust somebody with two first names. That's a rule. They say you never trust somebody with two first names. Nicole Anthony. Uh, she's a 24-year-old preschool aide. <clears throat> the most difficult part of uh, being away, or sorry, the most difficult part about the show is going to be biting her tongue um, and not telling people off. Um, she also says she does that every day. She's a preschool teacher, so she works with kids a lot. So she says she says she does that every day, so she kind of has a leg up on that already. Her favorite house guest is Paul. Uh, she liked how he ran the house and everyone else followed. Her strategy is to play as authentically and objectively as she can. Um, she says it's a game, and even though her opponents are pieces, they're still people. Okay, so I see a kind of like a lot of uh, conflicting uh, points there. You know, how she's saying, oh, Paul just did what he had to do. And she didn't, he did no, no apologies, whatever, not apologetic. And she's saying, oh, I got to do what I got to do, but these people are still people. Um, I don't know with her. I don't know. I think, you know... She's going to be one of those ones, in my view, I think she's going to crack. I think she's one of the first to crack. I think when you deal with children a lot, and listen, I have two kids too. When you deal with kids a lot, you always have to be like overly nice. Not overly nice, but you kind of have to like up your voice a little bit. You know, when you talk to kids and stuff. And if she's used to dealing with that at school, with the kids all the time, she's going to go in this house of lions. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think she's going to get eaten alive. I don't think she's going to do well. Um, I think she's going to break down quite a bit. I think she's gonna have a hard, hard time. It's just the vibes I got off these answers. There were some things she said about locking her parents in the basement one time or something like that, whatever. Um, I don't know, again, this is off of text, but I just have this vibe that she's gonna have a hard, hard time in there. I don't think she's gonna be very memorable. I don't think she's gonna do much in there. I think she's just gonna kind of be a piece in there that gets moved around until it's that piece's time to go uh, kind of thing. But who knows, that's the vibe I get off of that. Um, you know, nothing against her. Uh, Nicole Anthony of two first names. You can't be trusted. And that's that. All right. Now I'm going to get into Ovi Kabir. He's a 22 year old college student. The hardest, his hardest part is going to be being away from his dog. He misses his dog. Uh, his favorite house guest is Hayden Moss. That's something you don't hear a lot. And I'm actually kind of glad he said that because Hayden Moss was a great player. I don't think he gets a lot of credit that he deserves. I think he did a really good job. Um, and won season 12. Um, it says he may not be the smartest in the room, but he'll put the smartest team together. And uh, that's awesome. And I, I actually have a saying that I always say, if you're the smartest in the room, you're in the wrong room. That's, that's the way I always viewed things. If you're the smartest in this room, you're in the wrong room. That means you can't learn from anybody. You should be in a room where you can learn from somebody else. Um, I like that answer that he gave. Uh, his strategy is not to get any votes against him until the finale when he takes all the votes uh, as the winner. He wants to get all the house get. He wants to get to know all the house guests on a personal level, uh, which is what I say all the time. You get to know them all on a personal level. You talk to each person individually. Get to know them, their strengths or weaknesses, what they like, how to talk to them, things like that. So he wants to get to know all the house guests on a personal level, and not alienate anybody. That's a that's a good start. Um, he wants to form a strong alliance and use them as a meat shield, and also befriend the other side of the house and talk to them non-game stuff. Uh, okay, similar thing. I had an alliance of numbers. Use them as a meat shield to move forward and make sure that somebody in that alliance is targeted before you uh, if the other side wins and targets your and targets your alliance. Uh, again, good strategy so far. Um, the other part, though, is where he says he wants to talk to the other side of the house about non-game uh, stuff. Uh, on paper, it sounds really good. But when you're in that house, 
Everybody's watching everybody. I'm going to tell you something, okay? If I'm sitting on the couch and I see two people sitting on another couch talking and I see a few people over there talking, I'm paying attention. I might not be able to hear what they're saying, but I'm like, okay, they're sitting there talking for 45 minutes. They're having a good time. They're sitting there talking for 20 minutes. They're having a good time. Maybe it seems serious. Maybe it's not. But the fact if you're being seen, talk to someone, even if you're talking about socks or apples, okay, you're still being seen talking to that person. And in that game is your own doubts or other people's doubts could be your undoing. So if you're sitting there literally talking about socks and I'm sitting here watching you talk about socks, but I don't know you're talking about that. I think you're talking about me or somebody on my side or you're trying to make moves. In my mind, you're plotting against me. So you could be sitting there talking about nothing, but in my mind, I think you're plotting against me. So that's the part where he's like, he wants to talk to their side. And I get it. You do have to talk to everybody, but you just have to be careful the way you do it. Because if people see you talking to people, their own, they be, their minds uh, can turn against you, even if it's harmless, uh, even if it's a harmless conversation you're having on the other end. Um, so that's something I think he's gonna have to watch out for. Um, but he has a, a lot of good points. Uh, okay. He also talks about how, okay, the goodbye messages. And I've said this too, when it comes, especially, especially, especially when it comes to jury, your goodbye message is your last weapon on that person, uh, and your last message to them. So when it comes time to vote, if you're sitting at the end, that's the last thing you've said to them. So I never understood why people would bash these jury members on the way out. It's like, they're going to jury and it's like, haha, sucker. I got you. I played you this whole time. And then they get the jury and they're pissed off. They're pissed off at you. So when you're sitting in the finals and you're sitting beside whoever, and the person that gets to vote now to see if you're the winner, to vote you as the winner, they're going to say, guess what sucker? You thought you had the last laugh on me. Here's the last laugh on you. And I'm going to vote for the other guy. And people make this mistake every year and I don't understand why. This is your last chance to kind of butter them up and massage them on the way out to jury. You just voted them out of the house. They're literally, their dreams are literally just crushed minutes before and now you're gonna poke them and kick them when they're down it makes no sense so i'm glad that this guy said that i'm glad that he talks about kind of like the good the goodbye messages is another kind of thing he's gonna work on because you have to you have to you have to the game is not over until you have that check in your hand um he uh what else did he talked to goodbye messages Oh, and then he also says he knows he has to be flexible uh, with his strategy simply because you got to expect the unexpected. Okay, so I don't know if this guy just, maybe he's talked to other house guests before or if he does understand the game or he understands the works of the game on paper because on paper he said literally everything you got to do. You got to do the jury management for sure. You got to be flexible for sure. You got to talk to people individually for sure. You got to form up the numbers for sure. You have to have a meat shield for sure. He has everything under control. His game is perfect. That's what he's saying. He has everything under control, but um, can he do it? That's the real question. Can he actually put this play into play or is it all just talk? Because anybody can say, hey man, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab these two people. We're going to get out this person. We're going to do this. But as soon as you walk in that house, everything changes because you have no idea who's in that house. You have no idea what other people's plans are. You have no idea who you're going to connect with in that house. You could go in there and nobody wants to be your friend. That's a fact. It doesn't matter how popular or cool or whatever you are. You can go in that house and you just don't connect with anybody and you're on the outs. That's the way it is. So on paper, this guy sounds great, but can he actually put this play into action? That's what we got to see. Um, but I'm interested to see. He sounds like he's like kind of this little party guy, life of the party. He knows how to talk to people. He can connect to people. I like that. I, I This is a guy I want to watch and I want to see how he plays. I hope he doesn't go in there and just turtles and becomes, you know, that guy that thinks he understands the game and knows the game and he goes in and just sits on the couch and does nothing. I really hope he doesn't do that because on paper, this guy has what it takes. So uh, time will tell, but this is one guy I'm looking, uh, I'm watching out for and I want to see what he can do. Next we have Sam Smith. He's a 31 year old truck driver. His favorite player is Derek, which is pretty much everyone's favorite player at this point. Um, his strategy is to be true and be a little bit of a rat for his alliance. And that's literally all the notes I have on this guy. He's a man of few words, didn't say much. But I'm very curious to see how he puts this. Uh, he wants to be a rat for his alliance. I don't know if he's saying he wants to be a rat and get the information and bring it to his alliance. Or if he wants to be a rat on his alliance and bring it to the other side. I don't know what he meant by that. But I'm going to just say he wants to be a rat and bring the information to his alliance. Okay. 
Little things with that. It's good when you're bringing information to your alliance because people will trust you more, okay? If you're giving information, people tend to trust you. If you're not giving them anything, they're not going to give anything in return. So being a rat isn't a bad thing because it does get the information circling between you and other people. You might even get information from them that they won't give to anybody else if they kind of trust you a little bit more. The downside to being the rat is when someone has to get caught and someone has to get found out, it's usually the rat that's a sacrificial lamb that just kind of, it's like, you know what? He's telling me all this information. Or when someone says, where are you hearing that? Like, I'm not coming for you. And it's like, well, guess what? So-and-so, he's the one that told me. And that's when they get caught and that's when their game crumbles and that's when everything kind of explodes. So um, I don't have a lot of information on this guy, but all I know is he wants to be the rat. And, uh, you know, it could work. You've seen, you know, um, Andy Heron, I guess he's known as the rat or whatever. Uh, it worked for him, but, uh, you know, it, it all depends how it plays out. I don't know. I, I, that, that kind of, um, that kind of player to me, I find they get caught a lot of the times, more times than not. And, uh, when they get caught, it's never good for them. They're usually up on the block the next day because not only that your alliance doesn't trust you, the other side of the house doesn't trust you. And a lot of the times, both sides will eventually just be like, let's get rid of this guy. He's a problem for all of our games. It's easier if he's out. See you later. Problem solved. So, uh, not a lot on this guy, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does in there. Okay, so the last one I'm going to talk about today is Tommy Bracco. This is the last of the house guests. Um, okay, so he's a 28-year-old Broadway dancer. He's uh, Devon is his favorite player. Um, his strategy is based off of his mom, he says. She cooks and cleans and is everyone's favorite person. He says he wants to be uh, the Italian mother of the house. And he wants to take care of everyone and make them all feel loved. And nobody will vote out that person. Okay. So this is the guy, I guess, people are making fun of him because he's 28 and lives at home. Uh, okay. I got a lot to say. So I'm Italian. This guy, look, look at this. I'm wearing my Italian shirt even, okay? This guy's Italian. And I'll tell you, I know Italians, how we live and our lifestyle. First of all, a lot of people that are Italians, a lot of people that are Italians, they live at home until they're married. And if you look, a lot of the people with money, okay, are Italians because they're not rushed out of their house at 18, 19 years old and literally trying to get by. So I have no problem with this guy being 28 living at home. I bet you he has a lot of money and he's going to go buy a house and do well for himself. So I don't understand why people think at 18 you got to leave the house. Um, uh, that case is just, I don't understand that. And then, you know, at the same breath, they always complain they have no money. Uh, this guy here, he's 28, lives at home. He's probably racking in the cash and he's going to buy a nice big house, have some money, can do some cool things. Um, okay. So the whole thing about being the Italian mother and all that stuff, um, I completely understand. I legitimately, as weird as it sounds, I completely understand. I think it's a, an absolute horrible garbage strategy for this guy to go in and try that. I think it's absolute horrendous. Okay. Don't get me wrong, but I know what he's talking about because in every, in every Italian family, the mother is the queen. The mother is everything. You know, your mother is absolutely everything to you. And every Italian family, mine included, my mom is our queen. She is everything to everybody. She cooks for everybody. She takes care of everybody. I totally see what this guy is doing and what he's saying. The fact of the matter is he's not his mother, okay? Nobody's going to take and be like, oh, that's our mother. Nobody's going to do that, okay? So he's going in trying to do this. And one, nobody wants to be told what to do in there. Or, or it could be, a, a, it could get annoying. It could get... Uh, like it just it's not gonna work i know exactly how this guy feels i'm italian i get it i've grown up in that environment my whole life i understand what he's saying that's the that's the part is i legitimately know what he's talking about how they take care of when they feed everyone they make sure everybody's okay my mother's the same way you know you could go to her house at 10 o'clock at night and she's like are you hungry and i say no mom i'm okay i just wanted to come say hi or whatever she's like okay i'm gonna make you some food that's just italians that's just how we are man and she'll cook something at 10 30 at night which is just crazy but that's because that's how they are and i understand what he's trying to say i just don't think he can do it i don't think he's going to be able to pull this off so um i don't know about this guy man i i i don't know man i i i see him as not getting along i seen the other house guests and i just see that the, i don't know i hope he doesn't rub people the wrong way i'd like to see him win he's an italian guy he's my you know that's my we're italians man we stay together uh but i just don't see him doing well i honestly don't i see him as a very early boot or just someone annoying people or just, uh, I don't know, man. I just, I hope he does something and I see his strategy. I understand what he means by it. I just don't think he can pull it off. Um, but I'm cheering for the guy. He's an Italian. He's Italian. I'm cheering for him. So, uh, it, I don't know, man. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. I hope he does better than I think he's going to do. Let's just leave it at that. 
So anyway, that's the cast, guys. That's everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a little bit rushed. Um, again, it was all through written bios, so I don't have a visual on these people. So it's very, very hard to kind of read them. Usually, I like to watch them interact with. I've seen Ika's videos on the other ones and uh, uh, Marissa or whoever it was on the other one and uh, Jeff's old ones. I usually watch the bios so I can see how even if if the questions that Jeff or whoever ask are good questions, just the way they respond to them and how quick they respond, I can get a good read on how they're going to be in the house in those kind of situations. But here, it's all written bios. So it's very, very, very hard to uh, break it down. But hopefully, you know, you guys at least enjoyed it. Um, I will be doing some breakdowns as the weeks go by. I'll recap things, moves I think people should have made that they didn't make or mistakes people made or, you know, how people are, are, are doing throughout the season, who's in a good spot or whatever. Um, I will be doing a lot of videos like that. So hit that follow button or sub button or whatever it is. Leave a comment who you like. Tell me who your favorite people are, your top three uh, who you think is going to go first. There's so much stuff going on. If there's anything you found on Twitter from these old house guests, put it down in the chat. I'll be reading everything. I'll answer all of you guys. Um, I'm also doing streaming every single day. I stream on Mixer. It's a site called Mixer. So uh, mixer.com backslash Capone Gaming um, with a K, Capone with a K, Gaming. I'll put the link down in the description here in the video. Check it out. If you want to come by after an episode and talk Big Brother with me, come talk Big Brother with me. I'm, I'm open. We can chat. You just got to click the link and... I'll pop up on a video, I'll be playing some game, whatever it is, and we can chat. Um, so anytime, I'll be, I stream quite a bit now, I'm getting into that now. Um, so stop by anytime if you have any questions, you want to talk big brother or just whatever, life, doesn't matter, uh, come stop by. So guys, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I will be doing more videos, um, so you're not getting rid of me yet. Okay guys, thank you very much. I hope you have a good day. Peace.